Hey, buddy. You hear me all right? You hear me? I can I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hang on. Um speaker. I got you now. Got me? I got you. Can you hear me? Yep, I got you. Perfect. Um, perfect. Get get your backdrop set up there, you. Hide the kids' toys. It's <laughs> funny, right? Sad state of affairs, my friends. Yeah, and I'd like to mount it. James, I'm just going to get my iPad quickly. I want to monitor the Facebook right. Live. At the time, so. um, Angela's going to monitor the Facebook Live, too? Yeah, and so is Christine. Okay, perfect, perfect. That's awesome. So I didn't, um, I didn't invite either one of them in, as a panelist, so do I have to put them in as panelists to do that? I think so. Um, I don't know if they're. I, I don't know how they're going to. Christine's going to be logged in as both. Angela is okay. just going to be on Facebook. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll we'll go. We'll we'll fly live and see where we end up. Right. So um, let's get this thing all set up. I invited Andrew on. He should be on in a couple minutes um, as a panelist. So it's just going to be the three of us as panelists. Everybody else will be in as. Um, users right as uh, attendees and uh, they can raise their hand or ask questions on Facebook live and we'll go from there I know when we uh, when I record all of this I'm going to um, obviously cut out the pre-session um, for everybody to rewatch but right now it is what it is bear with me guys I'm just setting up my iPad too much technology buddy Yep. You got my lighting and everything all set though, huh? Uh, cool. Me too. Me too. The air, you like the airplane background? You got, you got, you got, you got the uh, New York street background graffiti. I got the airplane background. I swear one day if I ever get rich, I want one of these and I don't even need to fly cause I don't like flying, but I just like the inside. <laughs> yeah. Just to, it's like, well, buy an RV, man. It's like the same shit. Yeah, I, I guess that's the same thing, right? If I'd have an RV, I'd be the one that parked it in the driveway and just ran and hid from everybody. <laughs> it's too funny. Now, the Facebook isn't up yet, right? No, no, I'm not going to launch that for a minute here. I'm just trying to get set up here with the Facebook Live. And I am having Mondo issues here. Oh, no wonder why it's logged into my wife's Facebook. That yep. could be the reason. Uh-huh. That's what happens. It grabs the, you know, the iPad all the time. Yeah. Well, every single thing I grab in my house, I'm like, why are there other user IDs? Cause these kids know how to create it, it, them. Exactly. So like, exactly. And, and, and it's either, it's either the wife, the kids or whatever. Right. So pretty funny. Pretty funny. And, uh, okay. So why are people posting political stuff on the group? Mm. Not cool. Yeah. You know, no, but I, you know me, I'm, I'm neutral. I don't, I don't like that stuff in the group. So no, and anyway. you know what, that's the better way to be because it's like, that's like grading at some point, you know, exactly. we shouldn't take our opinions out on each other. Everybody has an opinion and they're all like, you know, and they all smell. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so let's get this thing set up. Um, you should have control on your side as a panelist. Also, I'll be the host on it. Um, let me just see. We got us two. I'm going to get in recording mode. Do you have some attendees in already? Yeah, I see that. I see that. That's fine. That's fine. Attendees, if you can hear us, just kind of ignore us for a few minutes. We're getting all the technology set up for the 8 o'clock class. Um, so um, what you're going to do is if you have questions after we do the panel um, Q&A, then you can just raise your hand and we'll be answering your questions afterwards. Okay? So just let... Um, the hosts get this all set up. Great to have you in here, by the way. So uh, we have, um, I think, 600 people registered right now and another 500 Facebook Live. So about 1,100 people, James. And you got to work a little harder, Derek, because, you know, I was kind of expecting 1,000. You know what I mean? It's like... We're over 1,000. <laughs> <laughs> We're at 1,100. <laughs> so, uh, but 
anyway, we'll, not, we'll not too much away. pressure, man. Not too much pressure. Yeah, yeah, but, exactly, you know, exactly. hey, it's fine. It's, it's, it's not like I'm not uh, working all day to get the, all this technology and all your bios up, and uh, everybody wanted a landing page at the last minute. And guess what I did? Just so everybody knows, I ran out and I grabbed. Oh, look at this! My can's invisible. Look, that's cool. <laughs> For the green screen, you see uh, what it is? Yeah, you're doing you're doing the white, white claw, claw, man. Oh, oh, I don't know, man. Isn't that funny how the green screen does that? It's funny, but if you know a zoom filter to get rid of this gray on screen, I would appreciate well, that it. Let it happen. You can see oh. mine, right? And I'm trying to figure out how I get my redness away with this lighting. I don't know. It's because you know what? I have like regular lights in front of me, and they cast like a really same with you. You got it too. So I think it's I think it's just you need really white light to get rid of that, but whatever. Good enough for, for this stuff, right? It all works, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about the education. There's going to be some great stuff happening tonight. So everybody get what you need before we kick the show off in a little bit. Um, that's for you attendees. Panelists, we're waiting for the rest of our panelists in. We only have one other panelist coming in. And uh, when I see Christine or your wife in here, I can kick them up to a panelist, James, just so they can um, monitor the Facebook Live. I don't know if they can monitor it without being a pan panelist. Let me see. So, are you getting people I'm logging actually, in? I'm actually going to. You think I'm going to launch the Facebook Live now, just to make sure that the training wheels don't come off? Okay. Like it. Bear with me one more sec. And cross your fingers here. It better work tonight, right? For what? <laughs> hey, listen, man. I just, I just work here. <laughs> yeah. Right. 200 bucks a month now for Zoom. They should be doing a lot for that. You know, they're, I called them and they told me it's three days before they can get back to me on a call. Oh, yeah. Because I guess all the school systems, I guess, are using it. Yeah, it's, it's huge for the school systems. And I think they're doing it for free for the school systems, which is a great thing, but it eats up all the bandwidth and it's beating us up, right? So. Oh God, my, my uh, computer's blowing up right now. The 10 minute notice is going out. So how'd you like that automation for the emails? Yeah, it was good. Okay, it looks like the Facebook Live is running. So that's a good thing. That is really good. All right, so I'm up on Facebook Live. <clears throat> Gonna and share the, just the background for now. I'm gonna share the beauty business reset. I just put us to the small mode. Move this bar out of the way. This thing, I'll tell you, the zoom bar. They couldn't make it so in the way all the time, right? So we just um, got a boatload of the classes up today. I don't know if you had, had been on here all the time, James. Is that your mic I'm getting the feedback on? or? Yeah, I, I got it fixed already. All right. So my only mic is my main mic. It sounds okay, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good. See all the new classes up? Yeah, looks good. Yeah, yeah. This is cool. Uh, Rodney came in today. Rodney Very Cutler. nice. Yeah. You familiar with Rodney? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It looks good. We're good. We're, we're, I mean, we're two weeks out already. We're probably going to end up having about, I would say, at least four weeks of education on here for free. So that's cool. At least this may go on even longer, depending on, you know, how many educators contribute their time. So we will see. 
I just get set up here, get comfy. Oh, I swear, I get feel like I'm glued to this damn computer seat sometimes. Hey, is um, I I know Jeff is on the Facebook Live, and I'm sure Jeff can hear me. Hey, dude, you got to give me a send me a secret message about when this aura mirror is going to come out, man. I'm like dying for it. Yeah, I saw him in the group lately. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm not really familiar with it, but I did see it for sure. Ooh. So uh, kind of cool. It's, yeah, it's it, it's really cool, man. It's really, really cool. So my, my big boss is in. Angela is on on the Facebook. Cool. Um, cool. Christine cool. is logging in and jumping on on some replies and things now, which is good. Yeah, I don't know why on mine the Facebook Live is not showing happy me which is typical of technology. Here we go. Perfect. We have 15 comments already. So uh, there we go. Now I got it live. So we got one hand up. Let's see uh, for the attendees. Let's see. Hey, Oscar. Hold on one second. Let me check you out, Oscar. Let him talk with me. You want to you want to talk quickly before we get rolling, Oscar? Question. Oscar, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, buddy. Okay. Am I going to be on the screen, or am I just listening, or what's the point? Yeah, no, you're just listening. So the way we're going to run this is the educators um, are going to be on the panel for the night they're doing the education, and then. Um, all of us guys can cheer them on after the fact. We can all jump in and, you know, have a hoorah, right? But so during the education, the, yeah, entire, during the education. The entire audience tonight is just watching you and James, correct? Uh, James, myself, and Andrew's going to be on as a, as a, oh. um, a mediator okay. also. And, okay. uh, I, don't think, I don't think any of your speakers are clear on that part, I have a feeling. I yeah, and, and and that's fine. I mean, they'll 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 pick that up quickly, right? It's uh, you just might want to speak it too, because some of them are listening if they're doing what I'm doing. Because I was there seeing you guys, but then I couldn't speak, or I didn't think you guys could hear me, and obviously I wasn't set in. So, yeah, I apologize. I should I should have gave you guys a heads up. I thought you all knew that, but again, we're putting together ninety things at once here. Oh, I, I so. get. I can't even imagine. But there's a whole lot of confusion on that page right now. In the in the. Uh, Business biz reset. There's all kinds of, there's a lot of different comments going on between that one and the other thread. I think just blows up all day with this <laughs> page. Yeah, it, it gets kind of crazy, but um, okay. so we'll get through it. We'll get through it. It's about education each night. The educators will be on. Um, and us as a group that are back in those educators, we can jump on and chat after the fact. Roger that. Um, but it's all about it's all about the class that the educator is doing that evening. Perfect. Um, okay. That's the way we're going to run it without a lot of chatter in the background, right? We want to okay. get a good education experience out to everybody, and then we're going to go from there. Oscar, if you can, anybody in the page or anybody you see, just tell them, hey, guys, we're not on the panel tonight. We're here to listen and support. Okay? Roger that. Hey, Oscar, Thanks, I Roger. need you. Keep texting me. You need me what? I, in case I need you, keep texting me. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you, man. And, uh, and I am still trying to figure out stuff here. Here I'm saying to myself, where the hell is the volume on the iPad? There we go. Don't want both of them going off at once. <laughs> Isabel has a question. Um, Isabel, bear with me. And then Patty has a question, then we'll get started, James, okay? Got it, let's see. Um... Isabel, you had a question quickly? Isabel. I'm gonna assume no. Um, I'll mute, there we go. Isabel, oh, yeah. Is, you a Isabel, you're a little early, but that's we're we're just getting everything set up. If that's what your question was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just gonna lower everybody's hands for now until we get started. So just 
just waiting for Andrew to jump in. I don't know if Andrew jumped in as a panel, so let's take a look. He is not in yet. So. Don't you love all this technology there, Big Daddy? Hey, I'm like glowing in the dark right now. And it's like, uh, forget it. iPad, MacBook, I'm like. <laughs> Get that last minute sip in before we get started here. We're going to get started in exactly five minutes. So if you are on listening, um, that is the start time. Remind your friends about the meeting, whether you're on Zoom Live or whether you are on Facebook Live. One way or the other, we are going to get these started each night. We will be kicking off with the educator for the evening. I will be the host and the educator will be re uh, leading us through their lesson. At the end, we will be talking about Q and A's after they are done. You will raise your hand or type in a message on Facebook Live for that. And I'll go through this again in exactly five minutes, like I said. Cool, hey, what's up guys that are on the call already? I'm seeing a bunch of people I know already. So thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Um, it's gonna be fun. I'm happy to kick it off. So hopefully you guys are excited. Got a lot of people in here, a lot of people. Sarah's in here, Boris is in here, Misty, Nicole, just watching the stuff come in as you go. Give a, give a thumbs up or a heart on Facebook um, Live if you're in here watching. So we can support our educators that are on tonight. Sally has a question. Will we be getting a copy of the class notes? Yes, Sally. All the classes and broadcasts will be posted within 72 hours of the class. It depends on how fast Zoom gives us our file copy. They're running a little bit behind because of everybody being on the internet. So yes, everything will be in here. Remember, once you register once also, you are registered for all the classes. You will get a message um, every day regarding those classes, what the link is for those classes. So we've got a bunch of people on chat here. I'm gonna move this chat box over too so I can look at those for you as we're going. James, are you able to see the chat box and everything also? Yeah, I can see everything. I can see too much, that's the problem. It's like the Wizard of Oz yeah, yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to concentrate on the class, okay? We'll, we'll jump into these questions afterwards. I'll walk you through them. I'm going to keep an eye on them, write down most of them. Hey, Robert Reed, great to have you in here. What's up, Robert? Lisa's in here, Bill Baker. Wow, great group tonight, blowing up. I got to so, say, if yeah, anybody's not friends with Robert, you should be, because he sends me the funniest things in this tumultuous <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> He should be up at the lake fishing every day. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So um, anyway, so we're going to get started at 8.05, just to give everybody a chance to get in here. Is there a way okay with you? Time frame. That's good with you, buddy? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Andrew. Andrew's in? Hey, Andrew. He, he's in. I just don't know if we can see him. I can see him. I'm here. Oh, good. Here he is. Yeah. I'm glad you made it back from the desert. <laughs> <laughs> it was clean out there, man. Hey, man. Not a, not a soul. I don't know. I love it, your room. It's, uh, it's I, a, I love your green. I love your green room. They um, actually, this is actually your real. It's a, I love that. Derek has the fun green room. I have the I have the I bullshit love that one. screen. That's... I'm so close to the screen right now. It's like uh, I feel like I'm in the front row of a, like a crappy movie theater in the '80s. I'm like glued right to the front. No, it's Great. cool. You, you gotta hide, plus you gotta hit the kids hide the kids' toys. So yeah, you know. <laughs> That's there's like Legos. Big... There's like Legos under my feet. It's like it's like a, an episode of Survivor right here. You know, I gotta like walk across. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Very funny. So, Andrew, we're going to get started at 8.05. Just okay. give everybody an opportunity to get in here. Um, I'm going to be monitoring the live comments 
Um, if you can do that also, Andrew, can you see them? On, yeah, isn't it? You should let be me, able to me, see the me, comments. Hold on a sec. I'm seeing so in, this, in the in, chat. In the Zoom bar, it should say messages. If you click that, um, mm. it'll give you the messages. So, Der Derek, I'm, uh, I don't see this. I may have come in the, I may not be a. Uh, You're a panelist. You should have. I may have come more. in the wrong, may have come in the wrong. Uh, it's okay. I'm, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to write notes. Um, okay. Because Robert it's, Reed it's, to all panelists. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's all you have to do is keep an eye on the uh, questions. Chat. The chat. James has uh, Angela and Christine are going to be monitoring the Facebook hey, Live. Perfect. So we can do those after the fact, right? So, hey, Julie, great to see you on Facebook Live. A lot of people coming in Facebook Live. Jody's in. Cindy's in. Cool, cool. So, again, two more minutes. We're going to get started. That'll be the official kickoff. Everybody get their wine glass or whatever your partaking in this evening, get comfortable. This is gonna be great stuff. Uh, every night at this time will be a new class. You will get a link by email if you register. If you do not register, you will be watching it in Facebook Live inside the group. Make sure that um, you check your spam mail um, because sometimes the emails go to spam and whitelist us so that you can receive all of our emails on the education. Oscar said no wine and livers taking a day off. That's funny, Oscar. <laughs> what do you mean a day? You mean a half an afternoon, right? We all, we're all in our pajamas day drinking these days. So. Hey, Oscar, I got all the connections, man, to booze delivery. There you go. Brianna, thank you. Um, support is about us being a community. Very cool to have all of you on here, so. Okay, 8.05. So I'm gonna get started and then I'm gonna hand it over to you, James. Okay, so I have a couple announcements to make. Uh, tonight is the Beauty Business Reset kickoff. Somebody with a mic on. Um, bear with me one second, let me take care of this before. Okay, there we go. So welcome to the Beauty Business Reset, uh, re reinventing our industry. Uh, the purpose of these classes is to help you as salon and spa owners uh, reinvent yourself while you have time, downtime, so that you come back stronger than you've ever been before. Uh, please watch all the classes. All classes will be at 8 p.m. Eastern, St Eastern Standard Time each night, probably for the next 30 days, it looks like, maybe even longer. We're going to give you a ton of education, have a lot of great educators signing up. Keep an eye on the class page inside the group here in Beauty Business Reset. You'll see all the different classes. And uh, if once you register once, you will be registered for all the classes. I'm getting that question all day long. You don't have to keep registering. One time is all we need. And we will send you an email link every single day for the new class. All the links will be different. You can't use the same link because Zoom, due to bandwidth issues, is giving us a new link every day. Want to get that straight for everybody. So again, uh, welcome everybody to tonight's meeting, Beauty Business Reset, very excited. Tonight's educator is James Alba uh, from the Beehive Organic Salon. And with that, I'm gonna kick it off and it's going over to you, James. and. So the floor is all yours, buddy. Awesome. Um, first of all, Derek, thank you for, for setting all this up. Andrew, thank you for all the work that you do behind the scenes. Um, we're really excited to, to be part of this. Uh, we're humbled. We are so ready for this beauty reset. So I um, want to welcome everybody that's on. We hope that these next bunch of days, um, we've brought a really eclectic group of people together. And there's no other way to put it, but they actually all give a shit. Um, which is a great thing. They actually, the free education, what they're talking about are all things that are gonna help you get out of this. And that sort of brings me to what my talk is about tonight. It's um, survival versus sustainability. Like what, what, what's the difference between the two? Um, hopefully this will be the start of some great things for the future of our industry. 
Um, but I want to definitely talk about a few interesting things. So unlike most of you, I got my start in the beauty industry because of a psychic. So I know a lot of you may have gone to beauty school. A lot of you are salon owners, and this is totally a true story. Um, but before I, I give you that part, um, I'm going to give you some basics. Uh, my wife and I, as Derek said, own the Beehive Organic Salon. We are in New Jersey, about 15 miles from the George Washington Bridge. Um, you know we are a hot spot, um, second hot spot after New York. Um, but Bergen County alone, it's treacherous here right now in terms of what's happening with the coronavirus. So I give props to all of you. Hopefully, almost all of your salons are closed right now because I thought, um, you know, I spent the first week that we were closed, you know, championing from the PBA to our state legislators to our county about getting salons closed because of social distancing. So hopefully you all are safe and you're home and you're closed and you're you know, you're, you're just taking care of what you need to at this point, and you're going to use this as a really good opportunity. Um, I would say in our salon, I'm the DJ, my wife is the rapper, so she does everything on the floor. She's the hair cutter. I do everything front of house and um, change some light bulbs. And, you know, of course, because we're a green business, they're LED light bulbs, which we can talk about on a complete another day. Um, but we are definitely salon owners. We're in the trenches every day. Uh, we are hands-on. We are there. So for any of you that are salon owners or stylists, we are in there with you. We, you know, unlike some of the coaches that are here, which are all fantastic, that were for salon owners or have experience, you know, we're with you. So in this, um, you know, obviously in this crazy time, we're feeling the same pain that you are. So we're home and we're dealing with clients and we're dealing with three kids in homeschooling. And I had a little bell I was gonna bring up because my, my youngest who's in third grade apparently thinks I'm her butler. And I'm not the cool butler like Alfred and Batman. I'm like the crappy butler that lives above the carriage house where the horses are kept. So it's like, ding, 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 hey, I need this, hey, I need that. And um, you know, because of Amazon, thankfully, these younger, this younger generation is not gonna understand that things are not just like snap your fingers and they appear. So um, maybe if somebody wants to work on that invention while we're off, that would be great. So, Whatever you can do, drone delivery, I'm all for it. Um, but let's talk a little bit about survival. So in the late 90s, my college roommate and I, uh, we started an IT consulting company and we were operating for a couple of years. We did great. And then I got hammered with 9-11 uh, in 2001. So, you know, obviously, um, you know, that was, a, that was a big hit, especially to the consulting business. And it was sort of a rebirth and had to start over. So I thought it was a great idea to get into the housing finance market and thought that was going to be uh, my, my new venture and that I did. And then in 2008, we all know, uh, especially you homeowners know how that went. And, um, you know, it might even be worth mentioning that I was born in the mid 70s during the oil crisis. So if you need crisis intervention, I am your guy. I've survived more than a few throughout. I mean, uh, uh, there's a lot of different things that, that have happened, but you know, I'm sitting here now and, and I'm saying that, um, you know, I talked about getting into the industry because of a psychic and that's probably the funniest part of the story, but um, we've been in business now, my wife and I, for about eight years, but 10 years prior to that, after the whole housing crisis, I had to go out and get a real job. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I'm the muse. I'm the guy you call if you have trouble with your logo or naming your company. Um, I'm always on speed dial and sometimes that means two o'clock in the morning because every once in a while when the kids go to bed I like to have a few Manhattans of my own creation um, but that I decided to go back into the regular workforce and say hey I need to just kind of be stabilized we had three kids at that point in fact I'm lying we had two with a third on the way so I said man I better get into something a little more stable than my crazy ideas that I have and I got into uh, to a recruiting company and you know, as I was there for a little while, I'm always the model employee, right? I'm going to show up early, show up ready, and, you know, always willing to, to do what I can to help. And I was just completely stuck. Um, you know, nothing was working out for me. I was following all the rules. I was doing all the things that I was supposed to do as a model employee. And as a joke, my father-in-law had gotten me a gift certificate for a psychic as a, as a holiday present. So, you know, I, that's not my thing. I don't... I, if you believe in them, great, uh, it's all good, but that's really not my bag. But I was so stuck at work that imagine this, right? Somebody that's a non-believer that I actually went and called and made an appointment with the psychic. So I left on my lunch hour. I didn't even tell the guys I worked with. I'm like, hey, I'm going out for lunch and gonna stop home and pulled over on the side of the road and, and, um, 
and I had a conversation with Hector from Florida, who was uh, who's a pretty well-known psychic, which I, I invited him on the call, so maybe he's on here. And Hector, if you are, you changed my life, my friend. I appreciate it. And, you know, we, we got into the call and he said, you know, what do you want to talk about? And, you know, usually I'm sure people that call psychics, it's about finding the love of their life and whatever it is that psychics te technically do. And, and, you know, maybe I only know Sylvia Brown or who was that, uh, Derek, who was that lady? Miss Cleo? Right? Something like that. So I, I talked to him and I said, all I want to talk about is work. I'm so stuck. Like I work my butt off no matter what I do and everything I do and nothing is working. And he said to me, you know, are you losing your hair? And I said, uh, no. Um, it was probably starting to turn gray at that point. And I said, to be honest with you, I will plant grass seed on my head like a chia pet before I lose my hair. And he said, well, I'm seeing something with hair. And typically for me as a psychic, that either means like stress, like you're pulling your hair out or you're actually going bald. And I said, well, to be honest with you, maybe it's my wife. She's been in the business at that time about 15 years. So maybe that's what you're seeing. And he said, no, 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 I see you. It's definitely you. And I don't know what to tell you. So here I am two years, third kid on the way. You know, my wife had been in the industry and we'll talk a little bit about employee employer relationships, but she worked for a typical salon, really big. Um, uh, I won't go into the Me Too movement, but it was owned by a man and she was a woman and women tend to get married and have babies on occasion. So it wasn't such a favorable relationship. And, you know, we moved on. I went back to work and I said, oh my God, this is crazy. I don't know what he's talking about and didn't think anything until three months later or four months later when I got laid off. And then it was like, holy shit. So we thought it would be a fantastic idea to take all of our savings and open a salon because why not when you're laid off? Let's just go and do something super crazy. That's a great idea. Let's, let's just throw it right, right? Throw it, throw it right out against the wall. Let's figure out what's happening. So um, that, that's sort of how our, our story started. But for her end is that here we had three kids at home you know, we're making organic baby food at home and we're doing all these things in an eco fashion and live a pretty green lifestyle. And the salon industry as a whole is just not built around that, right? It's like wasteful and things like that. And, you know, we wanted to open something that was more health and wellness focused, but the clients benefit from that because we really opened more on the health and wellness and mental health of our staff. So that's sort of where our founding principle was and we just really wanted to make sure that that's what our company ethos was when we started. So sustainability from the green aspect was always something that we wanted to do. And we, we pride ourselves in being a salon that follows sustainable practices, but it wasn't just the green aspect. It was about implementing all practices to keep us in business. Um, about four years ago, we, um, we, we are the eco salon winner in London from 2016 for our hair care line that we carry. And we met up with another couple that are in Vancouver Island in, um, in Victoria, Canada. And they sort of had the same mentality and we started a project called the Salon Movement. And the guise of it was to teach salons how to be better. We would say best practices, but under the guise was about green practices. But reality of it is, if you're not educating your staff, they're not gonna get any better. So if you're in a mud hut with geothermal heating, solar panels, with LED lighting, and you know, uh, you know, your staff runs on a Peloton to make sure that the hair dryers work. You're you're not going to you're not going to sustain anyway. And that was sort of when Derek and I talked about opening this. Um, I am not an expert. I don't. I'm. I am open. I am truthful. I would help and answer any questions in the best way that I can. So um, you're lucky that the panelists all behind me. Are all experts so I am your I'm your primer so I'm the I'm the opener I'm the I'm the beginning of the I'm the comedian that goes on before Dave Matthews or whoever and and tries to get you guys in your seats I guess but um, I'm definitely open to questions I want to make sure that you guys that are on zoom use the Q&A for those of you on Facebook um, we have a few people my wife Angela's helping to moderate um, Christine Zielinski is helping to moderate a bunch of our panelists are on both so ask questions. I mean, we're here, like I said, we are in the trenches and we want to make sure that we're here to do everything that we can to help you. Um, you know, there's a lot of other things that go along with sustainability. So whether it's marketing to your current clients, your involvement with the community, um, these things are all equally important. And one of the reasons why our salon is named the Beehive 
is that when we started, we said, well, bees are important to the planet, right? So we wanted to pay, you know, respect to the planet. The retro hairstyle from the 60s, so, you know, the, the beehive hairstyle obviously brings in the, the classic forms of hairstyling. And bees themselves work together in this teeny tiny place as a community and do such impactful things. So that was always our goal. Is our goal was to be an impact on our staff. Our goal was to be an impact on our community. Our goal wound up being an impact on the hair community overall. So we've always been a friend to the industry. Uh, we tend we attend a lot of events. Um, it's funny that if um, you know my my wife is uh, is is a little more on the shy side and you know a little more um, to the nose to the grindstone in the business side, and she gets a little mad at me when I'm the one that you know, into Coiffure at the bar in the Hilton and I'm inviting all these famous hairstylists to drink with us because, you know, I don't do hair, so I don't have to, you know, my, my Tuesday morning, not Monday morning, does not involve Japanese um, strength shears and, and being worried about cutting anybody's ears off. So I can, I can stagger in like Arthur if I want to on, on Tuesday morning and it's all good. Um, hey, but Jen, we want to make uh, yeah. A couple people chiming in. They want to know how they get involved in the sustainability movement and the green movement, right? So you are the king of this, in, in my opinion. That's why I wanted you to kick this off. Um, Eco-friendly stuff is very important right now. And uh, a lot of people want to know how they get in touch with you and how they get involved. Yeah, so um, any medium, so Facebook, Instagram, anything, we are at Salon Movement. So um, our website is the thesalonmovement.com. Um, drop us a line, um, you know, Curtis and I and, and Chantel and, and Angela obviously run the site and, and are happy to answer questions. I just want to make sure that we're really clear on it, that these are things. So, so first and foremost, if you could save money by going LED, I haven't changed a light bulb. And my joke was, I was like Schneider, if you guys, I'm a little bit older than, um, not Derek and Andrew, but, you know, with the keys and I had all, yeah, I, I know you're on mute. So I, I know what you're saying already. Um, you know, I had the keys to everything, right? I could unlock all the doors and all the stupid stuff. But, you know, at some point when with the salon, we have 200 light bulbs in our salon. So it became like, how many times can I get on the ladder a day? It turns into my father. Like, I'm on the ladder changing light bulbs every morning. What the hell's going on? And now that we went all LED, I haven't changed the light bulb in like five or six years at this point. So it's almost funny when something goes out and when the bulb goes out, it's always that like really weird little bulb that nobody has that you can't even find. So like there are things that are money saving. Uh, we're, we're an ambassador for Green Circle Salon. So if any of you Green Circle Salons are on here, um, love you guys, know how hard you work. Um, one of the things that we teach our salons that we work with is about communicating that green message to their clients. It's great if you do great things, no matter what it is, whether it's green, whether it's community or otherwise. But you know, we always feel like stylists spend so much time and, and obviously the stylist and the people that work in salons are such a key to the community, right? You think of the old barbershop, you know, water cooler type things, and they're such a key part, but sometimes you need to tell the client other things that you do. It's like, hey, um, by the way, shut up for a minute about your divorce because this is the shampoo I used because your hair is fine or your hair is coarse or whatever James, it is. But James, a couple, couple, uh, couple comments coming in, and this goes right on point to what you're saying right now. Um, somebody just asked, sustainability is a large bucket. What are the top three things in your salon that you can concentrate on with regard to um, sustainability and how does it impact your profitability? It's, it's a great. That's, that's actually a perfect question. So um, number one, LED lighting, just do it. Um, anybody can email me. I'll show you how to make the transfer. Um, unless you have, unless you're in a super old building with those old tube lightings, that gets to be a little bit complicated, but Outside of that, do the LED lighting. It's a little bit of an investment. It's not that big of a deal, but think of it this way. The cost of light bulbs is X, right? But the, you have other stuff to do, right? You wanna email your client, you wanna do things. You wanna be on a ladder every morning, changing bulbs and worrying about whatever during the day. Bulbs never go out. It's like, um, it's like smoke alarm batteries, right? They never go out when you wake up in the morning. They go out at three o'clock in the morning while you're sleeping and you hear that stupid beep. So the same thing happens in salons with lighting. So those are things that there's a minor investment that has a humongous return. Um, another thing is, as I mentioned, Green Circle Salons, we have some things that we do with them where um, the client actually, so when you get your oil changed, right? You look on the bill, they have a fee that they do to take care of that waste. 
there's ways to use Green Circle the same way. Um, we try to challenge Other our salon. With them. You, you know, a lot of my coaching clients use that. And just so everybody knows, James is one of the biggest proponents I know of Green Circle salons. And it's, it's a recycle fee built into your services. And uh, if you have questions about it, definitely go to this guy. If you have questions about um, water, that's another big one, right? Eco heads. Well, you know, listen, I, I don't know if Paul is on or not. I, I love Paul Tate. Paul is, um, he does eco heads for um, the, the Northern, um, you know, US and Canada. So him and I had a lot of conversations. Matter of fact, this whole, um, I, I guess I should go backwards and say, you know, this is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day this year. So as a green salon, as a champion for the environment, uh, we've done some great projects. I mean, we've had events that were outdoors for Earth Day that had 5,000 people at them. Um, so we sort of had a lot of things lined up for the salon industry for this year that got completely screwed um, because of what's going on. I mean, we had, um, we had something we were working on with our large water company that's here about salon water usage with grants involved. And, you know, we put this whole proposal together and they were on board and we had the state of New Jersey. We are a registered sustainable business with the state of New Jersey through the EPA. And everybody was really gung ho to do this. We were going to save, you know, a million gallons of water a week and, it was really exciting and then Corona hit. So I may not drink a Corona ever again after this because I might be so tainted by it, but um, you know, it, it, there's the projects that are there, but things like, give me an example, EcoHeads is a perfect example. Really cheap, makes a better client experience, right? So the way the pressure is, what it does, the less waste that it uses, you're talking a couple hundred bucks for most salons. So, why not do it and use it as an experience for your clients? So whatever the cost factor is, I mean, we're in Bergen County, New Jersey, which give you a funny story. You know, you're all getting hammered with emails right now during coronavirus. I mean, I, I haven't bought anything from West Elm since I bought my dining room table like six years ago. And I've gotten more emails from them about how concerned they are about coronavirus. And I'm like, you didn't cut me a deal then. What? I, I don't, yeah, I don't really exactly. know. Right. So, you look at all those things and you, even um, our big, we would say glossy upright magazine in Bergen County, they don't want to give you anything, right? So when we advertise, a full page ad is like $4,000 to advertise for one month. They're horrible about promotions and all the things they do. But they sent me an email and said, hey, guess what? For May, it's half price. Well, guess what? We might not even be open in May. So now you're going to do that. But something like EcoHeads or something like Green Circle Salons that actually helps the environment with a minimal cost that actually has a return is another talking point. And that's part of what we're talking about tonight in terms of survival versus sustainability is that everybody's in survival mode right now, right? Oh, we have God, a couple more questions. Do. Go ahead. James, we have a couple more questions. Uh, a couple of people asking what color color line you use in your salon. Um, if I may, I know what color line you, you use and you're very in, involved. You run the green movement for that color company, um, which is Davinus and um, not promoting one color company over another because we have a couple great coaches that are going to be involved in this that also um, are very um, planet aware, we'll call it like Beth Minardi. But uh, I know you guys use Davinus. So um, and talk about how eco-friendly they are. So, well, all right. So, and, that, and that's a great question and that's a great point. So we do, we are aligned with the Davinus brand and um, you know, there's a bunch of things that we particularly like about it. It's still, um, it's still sort of mom and pop. Unfortunately, pop had passed away um, a few months back. So Davide um, and it, it's named after Davide and his sister. Um, they actually, it's, um, it's really sweet. They have a documentary that they're trying to figure out a way to release. So you can see mom and dad, it's still family owned entirely. They still do all their own production. So they're not a big, um, I'm not going to name any names because my, my tires might be flattened outside, but there's a lot of companies that are much bigger chemical companies that make hair and beauty products. Um, but, but to what you had asked me, Derek, one of the things besides the eco facets of what they do, for the hair community or for the environment is they actually care. So what I would say to all of you now is no matter what happens during this closure, if it's another 20 days, you know, 14 days, 21 days, two months, whatever it can be, which we all know we want to get back to work as soon as possible, 
this should change, and I'm saying this very specific, every dollar you spend as a consumer and as a salon owner from here on out. Because I can tell you from our end is that we are a friendly contact. We talk to salon owners that have different lines. We are agnostic on that sense. We are always an advocate for the industry overall. But I was contacted, right? My distributor called me personally. My brand called me personally. My reps for the brand, my reps for the distributor. You know, besides all the other things that had to happen, you know, besides our friends and, and you know, people in the industry that, that we're friendly with, we were contacted by all of the things that we do because we were set up sustainably to work with companies that actually care. My insurance agent, my accountant, my attorney, all these things that are going to make it different for you guys to be a survivor or a sustainable business, our partners were already set. So we were fine and they all reached out. So we left, I mean, the first week was like so upsetting. Derek, you know, we talked um, New Jersey as a state closed on Thursday, which I guess what was the 18th, Derek, something like that. Yeah, I believe it was. Yeah. You know, mo most of the owners were closed prior to that. You particularly, we talked because Bergen County was the first to get shut down in New Jersey. It was kind of the hotbed. By the way, a couple comments coming in. <laughs> Am I in a private chat? No, that's my green screen in the background. Pretty funny. And yes, I'd love to get a quick getaway. <laughs> but uh, no, so, so what he's going back to is yes, salons are getting hit hard by this and certain spots um, before our state got shut down. James called me and said, dude, my mayor is shutting down everything in our area. What do I do? And I said, okay, Let's, let's create a plan and, and let's communicate with who we are and what we do with our clients. Okay. The most important thing you can do as an owner right now, and I'm not going to take this over, James, I'll let you jump back in, is communicate with your clients and your staff, but more so with your clients. Get your staff communicating with them, doing funny stuff, personal communication, all those types of things. Um, James and I set up multiple ways to communicate with, with the clients that they have. So get on that right away. If you wanna be green, now is the time to start being green. I'm gonna kick it back over to you, buddy. Yeah, and you know what, that's right. And it's funny that I, I looked back while you were talking, Derek, and I looked and, um, and Josh, from, Josh Howard from Vish, which if you guys aren't familiar with Vish, Vish is basically this really fun software that sort of um, it measures your color, it helps you with inventory, helps you with keeping formulas, and helps you with reduction. It gives you metrics, right? So no matter what, if you want to be a sustainable business, you should be looking at your metrics. I don't care who your software company is. Um, I'm lucky on my end because I'm friendly with more than one software company. So whatever software is right for you, they all have reporting. Um, they all have tech support if there's metrics and there's information that you want, but you need to know your numbers. And I feel like, um, <laughs> I feel like Neil Dukoff, no compromise, know your numbers. But, um, you know, I, I can tell you this. We opened, my very first seminar that I went to in the hair industry was at a humongous salon um, in Montclair, New Jersey um, called Bangs, which I don't know if, if anybody that's, um, you know, Bangs is a really big salon. It's in an old church. It's like just a crazy cool space. And it's, Neil did the class. Crazy. Yeah. Five million, $5 million build out. It should be crazy, right? Yeah. So. So, so Neil, it was, it was a, you know, it was a, a, a seminar run by Neil and I was invited, believe it or not, by Wella. So we were definitely not a Wella salon um, at all. And Michael often, who's not in the industry before, who I invited to the call, he, he left and went a little bit adjacent to do something different. But um, when we were, I was painting the salon, right? So now here I'm unemployed. Psychic told me I'm getting into hair. We open a salon and I'm painting because you know why not because that's you know why not work for free if you're unemployed oh, well james one one thing um phyllis said uh is that fish no it's vish phyllis. fish v-i-s-h -V so um josh i don't know if you could post it in, in the panel but it stands for i want to say it stands for vishnu which is um the indian uh, it's it's from the indian culture about protecting your stuff so it makes a lot of sense. Um, very creative name, by the way, that I didn't come up with. Josh didn't call me for that. Otherwise, I would have, um, I don't know if I would have named it that. I, I, I love it. He did a better job than I would have. But um, 
but you know, so I, I go to the seminar, I see Neil, I'm with, I don't know, 90 salon owners in this humongous space and everything he said, hey, do you guys do this? Hey, do you look at the MA200 through Millennium? Hey, do you do this? And 89 hands are down and everyone, I'm like, we do that. Hey, do you have a pension for your staff? We do that. Hey, do you do this? Hey, we do that. And Neil said to me, hey, we, you and I have to talk after the class. So my very first signed book in the hair industry was from Neil. So it's always been our joke. And um, Neil actually graduated high school with my father, which I found out years later, which is really even crazier. So I'm definitely destined to be in the salon industry th thanks to that psychic. Um, so, so we have a, a question coming in. How would Vish compare to Rosie? Vish is a color measuring software. It is not a point of service software. So it does not compare two separate programs. They do integrate with each other though. So that's important to know that um, some of these color measuring softwares are super important. Basically, if you wanna be eco-friendly, what's our biggest problem as salon owners, right? It's how much color gets washed down the drain and wasted. That is, you know, you talk about sustainability and James, I'll let you kick this off, but yeah. color being washed down the drain is not sustainability. No, and, I, and that's what, you know, Josh, um, Josh and Vish and I had talked about that a bunch of times is that, you know, not only is it not eco-friendly, you know, cause it goes, it eventually goes back into wastewater. So you guys that have salons know that stupid, um, what do they call that? That backwash, what's it called, Eric? The, uh, the stupid device on the sinks. The vacuum breaker. Yeah, the vacuum breaker, right? The useless vacuum breaker that nobody knows what it does, except if, you're, if your assistants or your staff leans on it too hard and breaks the top off, you know it costs you 200 bucks to replace it. That's all you know. It doesn't really do. So Josh just, Josh just jumped in, James, on the, on the live comments. He said, we are integrated with most salon softwares and we reduce your color usage by 40%. Yeah, and I, and I would probably say to Josh that the 40% is inaccurate. I bet it's more. And I mean, we know, we know because we use it. So it, it's like, so you look at something so obvious like that, they, you're helping with your inventory. So you're reducing workload, right? So you want to talk about sustainable, you're reducing your workload because it's helping you with your inventory. You're being able to measure the waste, but you're also updating formulas. So in other words, the client that you have to go back and you're like, oh man, I have to go back to the bowl and mix it's updating it in the system for you. And more importantly for your stylist is that if you have some weird color lines that have multiple parts, so the Davinus line, for example, has three parts in the Ramonia Frey. It's a pain in the neck, right? Because it's grams, we're in the US, blah, blah, blah. So now all of a sudden you don't have enough color, so you need to go back to the bowl and remix. And you're like, oh man, how am I gonna mix a quarter of an ounce of three parts and your measuring is limited in what you have and you know, you're, you're turning into a Mr. Wizard's chemistry set. Vish does that for you on the scale. So it's just like, why, like, why are we not, why, why is that not something that everybody does? And it's, the, it's this. And by the way, guys, this, this whole um, series that we're presenting to you, um, when we're talking about different companies, we don't get anything as a kickback for this. I just want you to know that no matter what, all these educators are teaching you, it is to help you, not for money. It's not for us to get money to run this thing. I just want that to be clear. It's really important. Um, if we see a company that can help you, uh, we will definitely promote them. If we see a company that will hurt you, we will not let them in this group, period. Yeah, and that, that's a good point. I mean, listen, I can't get anything, anything for free. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, listen, it's things that make sense, right? So like I said, like things like Green Circle make sense because they help the environment, but they're also a communicating point with your client. And that's what's happening, right? Is salons sort of, the, whatever this reset happened, whether it's the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, and you know, um, it's funny that I sent a message to um, one of the weird green groups that's on Facebook, and they said, here's the the top 10 books for the 50th anniversary of Earth Day to read. And Silent Spring wasn't on there. Silent Spring was written by Rachel Carson over 50 years ago. She basically was the one credited with starting Earth Day because when they came back after the war and used DDT, they, were tr they had so much of it, right? They're like, what do we do with it? Oh, let's spray it on plants and see if it kills bugs. And it kills grasshoppers and all and everything, right? 
So here we are in a stage in the salon industry where it's like the ant and the grasshopper. So the old Aesop fable where, you know, the ant's storing away whatever it needs for the winter and the grasshopper screwing around. Well, the salon industry has been screwing around for this whole time and they didn't, they didn't bother to do any planning. They didn't bother to do anything to keep themselves sustainable. So now you get That's stuck. why we are in the beauty business reset right now. That's right. That's right. And that's where, you know, you know, here's a few things. And I'm saying these out loud. I hope you guys post some questions up. Like I said, I am not, you know, um, the, the panelists that are on here are going to have really good structured things in terms of what they, they teach, which is great. And that's why I love them. <clears throat> On my end, I just want to challenge you with the questions, right? Like, you know, during this whole thing, how are you feeling as an owner? Like, you know, when you look at the day-to-day -day prior to pre-corona, pre can I coin that? Like, there needs to be like pre-COVID. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, if stylists are on here, your owners went home at the end of the day, and especially a lot of owners work behind the chair, and they did the same stuff that you did all day. And if you have kids, they went home to kids. If you had 17 cats, they did the same thing. But guess what? They went home, still had to cook dinner like you did, but then they had to do payroll and they had to think about advertising. They think about marketing and they had to think about why your, your retail numbers suck. And they had to go through these reports and do this. So the ownership so, is like so a James, good job. I, I want to get into that a little deeper um, because that's sustainability, but it's a different type of sustainability. How do we sustain ourselves as a salon owner um, with our brain, right? I mean, pre-corona, we were thinking salon business 24 seven, right? We'd go home, we'd be the last ones at the restaurant at nine o'clock at night, driving the staff crazy um, because we had just gotten out of work and didn't have time to make ourselves dinner, right? And, and now corona, right? We're still in the same position, but how are we focusing right now? Sustainability is not just about what you're doing in your salon, it's about yourself. Super important. It is, and you know, and the, that's a really good point, is that it's the reflection period we're in now. So, you know, when you look at sustainability overall, so you plant the tree, right? What do you do with the tree? You can't just plop it in the ground and then leave. It's gotta be watered, it's gotta be trimmed, it's gotta have, you know, it needs a little bit of care and your businesses are like that, but that doesn't only reflect on the owners. That's you as stylists. So any of you stylists that are on, you know, you're afforded the luxury of just showing up to work because your owner did all this work and you get your paycheck and you do all these things. But um, my famous thing, which I'm putting it out on the internet right now because nobody's ever going to steal this from me, it's portrait <laughs> versus landscape, right? So when I look at my salon software as a stylist, I'm looking at it this way. I'm looking just at my book. For me at the desk or as an owner, I'm looking at it this way and I'm seeing the whole book. So maybe it's a little bit of time to stop being so selfish and look at the business overall. Because you know, there, everybody thinks there's so much competition in the salon industry, but I have to be honest with you, we're, we're really busy. There's 22 hair salons in two square miles of where we're located. Maybe some of them are your you know, your lower price supercuts type places. And there's, God, uh, I wish, I wish Augie had a phone because Augie's barbershop, he's been in business like 900 years. I don't even know. Augie might not, it might be Augie the third at this point, but he's got this little teeny tiny corner spot and he's there, but we are all in the same business. So why are we not championing ourselves? Why, you know, if, if you look at the hair industry from the technical side and you said, well, we're educated and we learn things to, to work with our hands. So plumbers, electricians, and that kind of thing. Or whatever it is, they, they get respect. If you look at it from the medical field and you say, well, you know, like Dr. Lou taught in the Psy, the psy Cosmetologist, we're being paid for us to put our hands on people like a doctor or a dentist. So we don't look at ourselves like technical experts, like a plumber. We don't look at ourselves like someone that can that you're being paid to, to be touched to, to perform a service. Why are, we, why are we fighting about Groupon in the group? Like, I know Derek, and I, go ahead, good say. So, yeah, so I'm gonna step in here, obviously, right? So, and this is one of the things, obviously, as the, as the creator of Salon Owner Mastermind, this is one of the things that drives me ballistic beyond anything else, is when we argue between each other. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has a right to survive. Nobody's opinion is correct. 
okay? Some are partially correct, some are partially wrong. It doesn't matter. We're here as a group. Patty hit it right on the nose. She said, we are here as a business and a group to, to create and, and grow beyond this. It's our job based on what we're doing in this group and these webinars to get together and make a voice that stands up against politicians and naysayers and get this shit right, hands down. Sustainability is not only about our personal selves, it's about this business in general. You know, the government today passed something today that people can sit home and make $900 a week on unemployment. I got news for you folks, that's something to pay attention to because the booth renter industry is gonna sit on their ass at home for the most part and not go after jobs if they can get a thousand bucks a week, right? So our job as an industry is to make a dent. That's sustainability also. And, and the reason I created this was to go against the grain to create a new movement within our industry that gets this stuff right when we come back from this period. Yeah. And you know, and it's funny, I'll, I'll give you another, and I'm always for the stories, right? Like I said, I'm not the expert. I'm just the storied crazy person. Um, our very first gift that we got for our staff during the holidays when we first opened um, was from a local company in Brooklyn. They did this crazy laser cut. Um, they did laser cut jewelry. So, you know, we were researching some things and we tried to find something. It's hard to, you know, when it's hard to buy a gift for everybody type of thing. Um, we got them this laser cut mirror and it sort of looked like a vintage vanity mirror as a necklace. And part of the theory was that they say psychologically for you as stylist, you're behind the mirror. So everything is in reverse for you, right? So when you have your consultations, sometimes it's reversed. When you have your conversations, it's reversed. When you cut hair, it's reversed. That there's something to that reflection of whatever that energy is, whether it's positive or negative, that it bounces off that mirror and comes onto you. And it was sort of a way to bounce back that, that um, you know, if it was, bit, listen, to be honest, right? How many conversations are positive? Like when you have someone in your chair, how many times is like, oh my God, everything's great. Everything feels so good. This is good. You're like the, so you're, 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 you're not charging enough money, right? Which is a whole nother call, which maybe I'll, maybe I'll do the 16th day on that. <laughs> You're, you know, you're, you're working and whatever the conditions are and everything else, and you're dealing with negative energy. So it was sort of our way to bounce back that energy. But during this time, I would say to you as owners, I would say to you as stylists, look at your reflection in the mirror. Like, what are you, what are the things that you think that you're like, man, you know, are you going to watch the Tiger King on Netflix, which I keep saying, which sucks, by the way, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm a movie advocate. My, my joke, uh, I told my wife when I was going to start the seminar, I was going to say, um, you know, what movie had the, you know, where have you heard the most F-bombs in the world? And, um, you know, Goodfellas came up, Wolf of Wall Street came up, and I was going to say, no, our house over two weeks of homeschooling. <laughs> like, don't, um, don't forget, I ran a public employees union for New Jersey, okay? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But, but look in the mirror and start to talk to whoever, talk to yourself. Make sure that, like Derek said, you're communicating with your clients. Um, I'm not advocating for Salon Ninja. I use it, but it's been such an interesting thing because I can keep in touch with my clients, email, text, and voicemail all in the same software. To be honest with you, I'm in the attic right now. Behind me is like a princess house and Legos and crazy stuff. And the computer has been moved up here because it's the closest spot to the router because of all the bandwidth being taken over with homeschooling three kids. That's been my lifeline to my clients. So my clients, if they think that we obviously always care, but how do you communicate with thousands of people at the same time? That's been a saving grace. Same thing with staff. Yes, I, I, pre I appreciate the plug really for our software. And I appreciate you being one of, my, my uh, coaching clients, uh, and you're also a mentor to me, to be honest with you. But I, I have questions coming in. Um, Nick, Nikki um, is asking, what are some of the phrases that your team can use to implement a uh, eco-friendly um, type environment? Well, so here's the thing. So one of the, and we've done this in our staff meetings before. So one of the things I will tell you guys is that in leaving this pandemic, one of the things that you have to do is you need to have meetings with your staff. We pay our staff to come in for these meetings. States vary, whatever, whatever. I would rather pay you whatever the rate is 
and make you show up than to roll the dice and think that you're not going to show up and not attend. So if I said, hey, listen, if you're $20 an hour, great. Here's 20 bucks. Come to my meeting, show up on time, be ready so that we can talk about things. But they have to be regular enough that you can have conversations so that that replicates within your salon and within your staff. So how's your color is one of my least favorite sayings. And my joke was, um, I wish Jay Williams was on. Um, I, I tried to get him to come on the call. Jay, um, Jay taught the class on the psych cosmetologist, which when you guys repeat this afterwards, I'll plug the book and I'll put it in there. But that was sort of what I was saying about stylists being one of the only other businesses outside of doctors or cosmetologists, right? Massage therapists and things paid for people to put their hands on them. Um, Jay's got so many great ideas and things that he talks about, but you know, one of the things is like, what is that experience going to be like when clients come in? So jokingly, I talked to Jay M Monday of the first day of us being closed, which was the 16th. I was on the phone for like 12 hours straight. I actually had to go back to the old school headset because my AirPods wouldn't stay charged long enough. And if I listed the names of the people I talked to, you guys in the chat would be like, you're full of it because it was everybody. So no, whether it was, I wouldn't, this, this guy, this guy talks to literally people that I'm like, how the hell do you know that person? But not so, just hair people, so, right? People in the state of New yeah. Jersey. I mean, whatever it was. I mean, all. Um, I mean, high ups in the state because the state of New Jersey still hadn't closed. I mean, I have a guy um, that I won't mention on a, a live call that I'm in contact with. That Governor Murphy is doing the press conference about the state, and I'm basically texting him saying, "Why the f is he not mentioning salons and spas? Like, close us down. You know, if they all saw 50 people a day." You know, you're ex James quick, quickly, um, and I'll step in. I'm not going to mention names either, but um, we have a uh, important voice in the state house, and uh, it was one of the reasons New Jersey salons got shut down. Uh, James stepped in. We talked about this. Stepped in, got this thing done so we could protect our clients here because it really is a hotbed here. Um, but um, so you know, somebody just asked a comment: What has been your common voice or concerns? Uh, regarding uh, New Jersey and our common voice, James and I have been speaking about this is to, you know, get this thing done. Let us know when we're being shut down, how long it's going to be for and how we get back in business and how we get loans. I mean, sustainability and I'm, you know, I, I listened to a few important things, James and sustainability to me from what I learned tonight from you is sustainability about the salon, all the little things you can do in the salon, right? It's sustainability about self, what you can do for yourself as a salon owner, and it's sustainability about us as an industry. And we all in this group need to get together on that. Yeah, and, and that's a good point. And that and that's I know we had talked about that a little bit before, but you know the home hair color kits all over the internet and people fighting about yay or nay or insurance and things like that. Um, it before before the pandemic, it was Groupon. Groupon sucks. I love Groupon. It, we're fighting about nonsense like we're competitors instead of us unifying and coming up with a clear message. There can be, listen, if there's 22 salons in, in two square miles of where we are in Bergen County, which I know is populated, they're all alive. They've all been in business for years. Some of them, most, more than a few, longer than us. They've made it this long. Whether they are super success, successful or not is not the issue, but they, they obviously can still pay their rent and stay open. So why are we fighting about whatever they do and why are we not advocating as experts and why are we not unifying um, for our sustainability? So like this call started, the green is what we do. That's part of how we communicate what we do to our clients and how we operate. But for you guys at home, I hope you all go LED. I hope you all join Green Circle. I hope you all make the industry better from that aspect. But the sustainability of our business is not about the recycling. It will be eventually because we're obviously, listen, the next pandemic might be that there's going to be the icebergs all melt and we all drown. That's a whole, <laughs> that's another, I might have my third call there. Oh, so there you go. We're, we're, we're like, uh, we're right the water, right? So. See now when I joked with Vivian McKender a couple of days ago that she's got three calls set up and I have only one, I'm like, now I might have my third, but um, you know, but reality of it is, is we need to band together as a group. We need to champion for change. Um, we need to make sure that, you know, 
the same thing in looking in the mirror, right? You look in the mirror all day, like I said, look in the mirror and figure out if you are a booth renter that was a shitty employee, I, am I allowed to curse on this? Is that all right? Facebook gonna block me? Um, I didn't say anything that bad, but if, if you were not a great employee, everybody wants the bash, right? My old owner did this, that's why I went to a booth. And you know, the owners say, oh my God, my staff left me because they went, like, just don't do that. Like, let's figure out ways that we can be better as an industry, communicate. People leave jobs all the time, right? People start jobs all the time. Why is it okay corporately that people have a different set of standards of how they do it? And in the hair industry, it's like, let me see if I can tip the receptionist to steal all my data so I can leave in the middle of the night and take all my shit. So the owner that works 40 hours a week behind the chair and another 40 hours a week to make sure payroll is done and that our Instagram is updated kind of gets hosed. Like think about the, it's not the first step, right? Anything environmental is not what you do right the second. It's like what you do the second that goes in steps, right? Frog leaps. Amen. What are you doing Amen. as somebody in the business that helps that leap? So, so sustainability, getting back to your, your core concept is about multiple things. It's about the salon. It's about the way you operate. It's about the way you're going to go forward. And it's about you as a person, right? And who are we going to be um, six months from now looking back at what we did now, right? That's why this is the movement. This is why we're looking to do the beauty business reset and uh, go forward. So what I'm gonna, we're going to, uh, at this point, um, we've been on a bit, James, and I appreciate everything you've said. Now I'm going to open up the questions to you, if that's okay. Yeah, I'm good. Let's go. Okay. So let's take a look at some of these questions coming in. So, so Nikki wanted, aside from, uh, let me just get back. I apologize. There's a lot of comments coming through. Let, let, let's go to some, most, some of the most recent. Uh, how do you recycle? Do you wash out developer bottles? How do, how do you foil trying to be green? So let's, you know, kind of, kind of a, and I'm not degrading your question, um, but it, it's a, uh, it's actually a common question from owners, right? Um, it is. Because we all know what goes on in the color room. Um, I'll give an example quickly. And then uh, James is way better at this than I am. And his wife. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to take a uh, take anything away from Angela. Angela is on the Facebook right now and on the live side. Um, but in my salon, I used to get so pissed off that I would tell them the plumbing was broken and I would put a five gallon bucket and say, dump all your color in there for the day. <laughs> and at the end of the day, there would be hundreds of dollars wasted. And then I would say to them, if you keep this up, I'm going to charge you for it. Um, there are ways to, to combat that through Vish and some other things, but you're always going to have it to an extent, right? But uh, you know, I mean, these are frustrating things for us as owners, James. Tell me how you operate. Well, it's funny, right? So in using things like Green Circle and Vish, last year we had 36 ounces of wasted color. So I, I literally, I had to call Green Circle and I was like, hey, how do I, you know, they want you to store it in this plastic bag and they have their protocol. And, and what we did was we used an actual back bar shampoo bottle because it was easier to funnel it in. And when I got to the end of the year, I said, Oh my God, 36 ounces. That's it. So whatever your color cost is applied per ounce at 36 ounces, that was our waste. Now, maybe there were some things that were stuck in the bowl and, but, but even that, like that was, that, that's a pretty damn good number. So think about the cost savings. You will be shocked, scared, and surprised if you just take a container of whatever sort and when, before you wash that bowl, put it in. Weigh the container exactly. first, right? Exactly what I did. I told them flat out, I can pay somebody like beauty school to stand in the color room and mix gram for gram. And what I would save would pay for their salary to stand in the color room and treat you like a child. Now, do you want to be a stylist and, and know how to mix color or do you, or, you know, I mean, that's the stuff that we get frustrated on uh, as owners. Yeah. And I would say this is that here, you know, these are where the, the wheels, you know, you see those bubbled graphs, right? Where things cross over. And this is where the problem mm -hmm. starts. You as a stylist, if there's stylists on here, how many clients do you have a day? I mean, God forbid, listen, I have a friend that's in the, in New Jersey, she works in a barber shop, And when she told me how many clients she sees a day, I'm like, holy, either you're the greatest barber 
you're the barber of Seville or I, you're in a hot, I, I don't know, I don't know what's going on, but she sees a lot more. But when you have color clients, especially, how many do you see in a day? If you saw eight clients a day, right? It, if you're doing these crazy balayage four hour appointments, even less. So you as a stylist, you have eight clients. Go to your book the day before, whether you're doing printed tickets, virtual tickets, you're doing whatever, come up with a game plan. Take some of the weight off the business because you get paid by the business. So go in, print your tickets out and say, you know, Mary hasn't bought shampoo in a while. This is what I'm gonna do for her. Have a plan of action before it's like, hey, I walked in, my hair is still wet. Let me finish blow drying it. Oh, the door is unlocked, she's already here. And it's like a haggard thing. I mean, why is there not more planning? And if you do that as an employee, it takes some of that pressure off the owner so that the owner can do better things. Owning a salon is not like, hey, I live in, uh, I, you know, I know I'm in Jersey, but I live in Saddle River. Oh, Upper Saddle River is actually not as good as Saddle River. You know, owning a salon is not like, it's, it's a passion project. It's not a, a humongous moneymaker. So anything that you can do to help facilitate the better things to make the business better overall, you will reap so many more benefits than the owner ever will. So shut up and go to work. Like go in and be ready. Like what's going on? Like, like what happened with this lazy salon business? You know, you guys want to be X, so you see all the comments, right? Everybody wants to be an expert now and everybody wants to do a YouTube and everybody wants to do Instagram. Why don't you shut up and go to work that first Monday or Tuesday you're back, print your day out, come up with a plan and help out the greater machine, not just your salon, not just your book, but the salon industry. So James, overall. what you said earlier, I was taking some notes. Show up early and show up ready. Very yeah. important, right? This is this is a culture thing. Um, why while we're off, um, you need to be writing notes about your what you're learning from these educators and, and take these key points, right? Show up early, show up ready. Period. That that's an important thing. You should be teaching your staff when they come back. Okay, um, Nick. Uh, sorry, I don't know who said the comment. It's a little blurred out, but it says this is such a powerful and potent branding concept to be part of. It's something so good to promote as a healthier lifestyle. That's with regard to a green salon, right? Super important with the branding. And now, in my opinion, more important than ever with everybody being um, scared of the virus. <laughs> if you come up clean, eco-friendly, all that great stuff, you're going to put your salon in a position um, to kick ass, period. And yes, you can curse. And you know me as a Marine, you're going to hear stuff you never heard before. So, <laughs> Yeah, you know, and that's a really good point, right? So for, for all of you that are out there, this is going to pass, right? Like I said in the beginning, I survived the oil crisis of the 70s as a baby. And I survived the IT crash of 9-11. And I survived the housing market of 2008. Um, there may, there may actually have been something else in there. My, my father worked for General Motors when the, when the auto company crashed in the eighties too. So I, I, I actually was a, was a kid for that too. So, um, i I'm a survivor. I've, I've rebirthed the Phoenix every single time and, and kind of grown from each thing. But, you know, think about it. Like, you know, if you're a staff member, okay, we've been in communication with our staff multiple, multiple times over this, whether it's helping them to fill out unemployment or just doing a wellness check to make sure they're good, or whether it's a stupid joke and messing around, we've all been in contact. If you're an owner, contact your staff. If you're a staff member, answer your owner back. You are not on vacation. So there's plenty of education like this that's free right now. I mean, you name somebody that is a big name in the hair industry and they're doing something, whether it's technical or otherwise, we're a little differently focused here to, to help you to grow but do something. You are not on break. You are collecting unemployment, which you paid into just like your owner did. But what are your next steps? When you open up, God forbid, we open the beginning of May, which fingers crossed, Eric, I hope it's the beginning of May. Your book is so. overloaded. Now you have to interject cleaning protocols in between clients that are going to take more time and do other stuff. Are you going to offer conditioning treatments to help to offset that time offset? You know, what are the protocols? Like, what are you guys you know, think about stuff because this is a great opportunity for us to do this reset so you can be better. Perfect. So, so with that, I had a comment. Um, somebody thought I was a little harsh on booth renters and independents. 
And the answer to that is yes, I am a little harsh. Um, and this is the reason why. I want booth renters and independents to be business owners. I don't want them to be business jokesters. Um, we'll put it that way, right? I want them to run a business properly. Um, part of the problem in this industry is that booth renters and independents um, have treated it not as a business. And it's really degraded our industry. And I'm not picking on the ones that are running it right. If you're a booth renter and independent, I want you to succeed. I want you to be to a point where you could, if you want to, start hiring staff and build your own business again. Okay, it's not about bashing you. It's about running things the way it should be. Now, what I do think the reason I made that comment is with what the government just passed, I think that a lot of the booth renters and independents who have just treated this, this um, career as a joke and just said, oh, well, I can do hair when I want to do, come and go as when I want, not pay taxes, all those other things. I think that they're going to sit at home and they're going to collect unemployment. And you know what? I get it. I get it. I totally get it because of what just happened. But you know what? It's going to be the change in the industry. And that's why we're here tonight. If you're going to be a booth renter or an independent from this point forward, you need to do a business reset yourself. Pay your yeah. taxes, run a business, make sure you're sustainable. The next time, open a corporation for yourself, put yourself on payroll so you can collect unemployment just in case your state isn't allowing you to collect unemployment now. Those are all things that you can learn because you are a business owner. You're just an independent. And I don't have a problem with that. Some people do. I don't as the, as the person running this group. What I do have a problem with is if you're not paying taxes, you're, you're treating your career as a joke and you're just doing it for a couple bucks. That's not a business to me. And you know what? If you're in this group and you're like that, please delete yourself from the group. Well, and, and that's a really good point, Eric. So I would say that originally I wanted to wear my Wu-Tang Clan t-shirt, but my wife thought that <laughs> all we have is now was a more appropriate shirt to wear in this, in, in this environment. But I think it also spins the other way too, is that if you, listen, not everyone is a great business owner, right? So if you own a salon and you opened it from day one at a beauty school, God bless, that, that's great. What made you do that? If you opened a salon after working for someone, start to reflect on what made you do that. If you were an employee that became a booth renter, or whatever, what made you do that? You all need to go back and reflect and say, hey, listen, some people are not meant to be owners, man. Like some people are just not, it's, it's complicated. Sometimes the, the grass is always greener, but you know, as the, as the eco-friendly guy, the grass is always green at least. Sometimes, not in my house, but uh, I'm trying to work on that while I have my, my reset here. But Careful, and Angela is live on the other side. You better be careful. Yeah, you know, she already knows. They, um, but you know, look at, reflect back on that. Like if you, if you didn't make it as an owner, but you love to do hair, then go be a great employee for a salon. Like now you have the time, right? I used to say this to all the beauty school people that we worked with that we trained. I used to do a class for our local beauty school about helping them get their first job. And I said, research the salon, whatever speaks to you is going to be a better thing. Like you, you might have longevity there. If they're into the environment, hey, we're a great salon for that. If they're just into doing crazy Instagram hair, we're doing like gray coverage all day long and doing it expertly. Like we are not gonna be this cutting edge doing prom hair. That's not our thing, which is fine, but I know salons that do. So do a little bit of homework while you're off on these. We're gonna say 14 days, to be honest with you guys. I'm saying 21 and I'm crossing my fingers. I think we're done for the month of April here in New Jersey. And I'm hoping you, it's not the entire You and month. I both know it's going at least May. Yeah. Here yeah. in New Jersey. Some, some parts of the country may be better. Um, and, and God bless you if um, this virus calms down in your area. Um, New Jersey, though, it's just getting worse and worse every day. We're probably looking at May. Um, and, and you know what? Our, our business strategies and the reason we're doing this group, as long as we can sustain it, it's to get you better when this does turn around. And, uh, you know, everybody here at James is giving us time right now for free. All these coaches that you'll see over the next probably 30 days, they charge hundreds and hundreds of dollars for seminars. And I'm not saying that, oh, wow, that's something important. 
but they're willing to give their time with no, with, with nothing. And you know what? Everybody's crazy right now. And it's, it's important. That's, that's our, our commitment to you for sustainability. Yeah, I agree. And I would say, you know, obviously if anybody has any questions, you know, throw them at us. Um, but you know, the encouragement of it is, is we will, the salon industry survives. We are an important part of everyday life. So my, my joke all along has been, you know, I'm, I'm super pissed off the first week and I'm like, you know, a haircut's not important until you're running for election and you're going to pay $10,000 to fly in some famous hairstylist to do it for you. But you know, we are, it's funny, right? Non-essential business right now. But to be honest with you guys, we were non-essential even when they allowed us to be open because they didn't give a shit. Our, I talked to state board. Our state board in New Jersey was closed when I contacted them to find <laughs> right? out. Our, 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 our conversation, they were, they were closed a week before James and I could even get in touch with anybody. Yeah. And I'm like, James, call the state house. Let's find out what the hell is going on because state board's already closed. Yeah. And, and people are going, oh, hair color, you can't do that at home. You can't do that. And I'm, I, and I'm thinking to myself, Okay, but the state board's closed. That shows how much pe politicians care about us as an industry. We need to band together as an industry with the PBA, Intercoffure, whoever it is, and we need to straighten this shit out from this point forward. It cannot happen again like this. We need to be a voice. That's it, and, that, and that's a good point. I mean, listen, you know, um, it's funny, my, my Monday, the first, so we closed that Saturday on the 14th. And because I run the front of house, I said to my wife, I said, I am completely freaked out. I'm handing credit cards and I'm handing cash back. And I am not the anxiety one. I'm the, you know, skydiver type of the, of the family. I don't care what it is. And I start to get freaked out. So I'm like, hey, this is like, if I'm starting to get anxiety over this, like, what are we, what, how long can we sustain this and make it so that our staff is comfortable, not the clients. I know they all want their hair colored. And obviously we're starting to, we were starting to lean towards the holidays and, you know, uh, whether it's the Jewish holidays or Easter and you start to open up the communion lines, people were sort of on a regulated structure that I said, hey, this is for us. I don't really, it's not about the money. It was about the comfortability about what we stand for as a message to our staff. So somebody had asked before about the green messaging and how you do that. My stand is that you guys should always be communicating with your clients, email, in salon and everything, but you see them. So you, if you're a stylist, they are in front of you. So um, my joke with Jay that I go back to before was the robes, right? We, we have, unfortunately we have a shared closet and you know, obviously the winter time. So it's coats on one side, robes on the other. And we always have these clients that want to grab their own robes and they sort of look like, you know, the hospital gown on backwards with their butt hanging out and they're, walking around because they really should be put on during the consultation. So from my end in the front of house, I'm saying, well, that there goes that shitty consultation, right? That's not, that's not going to happen. Now she's already has the robe on and she's trying to rush the service. But reality of it is then she's touching every single robe that's in there and not just she, the guys too. Um, they, you know, this virus helped solve my robe problem. We've been talking about this for six months. What do we do with the robes? Where do I put them? How do I do it? So look at this as an opportunity to look at some of the protocols that you have. And on some days, I am the bitchy not some, receptionist. All. Well, so not some of you, right? You're right. It's not some of the protocols. Not some just the cleaning. Have great great yeah. systems in place, right? But it's literally, let's start from scratch again. Let's look at as if we were just opening our business from day one. And all this advice you're going to get over the next 30 days, use it all. Reinvent your systems so that when you come out of this, you are a rock star. That's it. And, that, and that, you know, and there was a couple of points on the call that we had on Friday that people had said, regardless of what you are, an owner, a stylist, however you fit into the, into the machine of what this is, the hair industry, use the opportunity to be honest. If you're not going to make it and you don't love doing hair, and this is sort of like the icing on the cake for you and you're going to leave... Talk to the owner and say, hey, you know what? I never really loved doing hair. I'm going to become a veterinarian or whatever it is. It, whatever the case is, it's time for honesty for us in the industry with each other to say, if you, you know, like I said, six months ago, if you were like, I can do my own salon and I'm going to leave, why do you have to steal the client data to open? Open your salon. You have such a great idea. Knock your socks off. 
Matter of fact, I, I jokingly had said to Robert, which I hope is still on the call years ago, I said, I'd love to put in our training program that at year five, if you want to open a salon, we'll be an investor in your salon, but you have to come up with a business plan just like you would have to do for anything else and we'll help you. And he, and I actually, I said year seven, but he told me to back it up to year five. If one of my stylists said, Hey, I have a great idea for a salon concept. We have a lot of relationships. Let's go. How can I help you? Can we, can we partner up and can you, you're going to need some financing anyway. Let's figure out a way to do it. Don't, don't go to the shady side of what the beauty industry has been for so many years where it winds up just being a, a, it's a shit show. And now you have a virus and now everybody, you know. That's exactly the point, right? I mean, you couldn't have said it better. Now you have a virus, right? The virus is salon owners who are acting under the radar. They're not paying taxes. They're not paying their employees. Their paychecks are bouncing on Fridays. Whatever the case might be, they have a bunch of booth renters. Nobody's answering the phone. They're not... They're not communicating with their clients. There's no, there's no structure. There's no systems. Right now is the time to sustain and build your systems. Yeah. Super important. Build them right. Build them with integrity right now. Build yourself yeah. with integrity. Like, like I said earlier, look back six months from now, you're going to want to look back right now and remember these classes and say, you know what? I took all these lessons and I built a culture and a salon that I'm proud of now, six months later. Yeah. And I would say to you guys and, and sidebar, right? Community is a big part of what we do. Um, about a week ago, I got a call through somebody from our local hospital. So Bergen County, New Jersey, obviously a super hot spot after Manhattan and they were trying to source wipes and things. You know, we use a lot of antivirals. Barbicide obviously is one of them in salon that they were so short that they started to contact salons to see because we were officially closed if we had stuff. So I helped connect her to a supplier that not only was able to get masks in and get wipes in. Um, we are, you know, I used to say I was the glue, but obviously being the beehive, I must be the honey in this whole thing. But we are here to help we want to champion this business. We want you guys to do great. We want this rebirth to be great, but you have to do a little bit of reflection. Um, look at what you can do for your community. When we did send an email out to our clients, we put a little blip in there and saying, hey, who needs basic necessities? Like, I don't know, we, you know, we do all these stupid tricky trays, right? No offense to anybody that runs a tricky tray that might be on the call, but you know, we donate all these baskets all year long to all these school causes and everything else. And I said, shit, do any of my regular clients need toilet paper? Do they need wipes? Are they in trouble? Do they need help? So don't miss that opportunity. And it's not a matter of marketing. You actually care about them just like they care about you, but just make sure they know it. So I'm going to, I'm going to jump on that quickly. Marketing is trust period, right? Marketing right. is trust. I'll say it this. And unless your customers trust you as a family member, you're, you're missing the boat with marketing. So it's about connection, trust, keep in touch with them, ask them what they need, anything you can do to provide them with a service. We are a service industry. Communicate any way you can, period. Don't be the person that sits and sends one email and sits on your butt and goes, oh, poor me. Don't do it. I'm telling you right now, don't do it. Get out there, get in front of it, promote your community, promote to your your, your clients, promote to your stylists, be there all the time. You know, it's, it's, no, it's no different than these crazy news stations we listen to. It's, in that case, it's mostly horrible information we're getting, right? And your clients are sitting there listen to the, listening to that, that chatter, right? They want a friend. They want somebody that cares about them. That's what marketing is about, being there for them at the right time, the right moment, and if you communicate with them in every way you can right now, I promise you, your client's loyalty will go up beyond your wildest dreams. That's all I have to say on that. No, that's it. And, and listen, uh, you guys had some great questions. Um, contact me, like I said, at Salon Movement, Instagram, Facebook, it doesn't matter. Obviously, I have my name. So um, whatever I can do to help, whether it's something that's on the green side of sustainability or some things that you want to do, um, I was so fortunate the first few days of this closure before the state actually did that 
Um, I, I mean, if I talk to 30 people that would, I consider close friends. And, and like I said, I'm not a hairstylist that the, the luxury of what we do for the business afforded to me the luxury of having them as a shoulder. Um, you know, I started out, um, you know, I started out my week listening to Radiohead and week two was uh, Rage Against the Machine and I was ready to go. And then this week I was like, ah, you know, we're just trying to round the bases. Um, you know, it, it's, don't be upset by it. Let's figure out ways to do things better. There's nothing that's a bad idea. An idea is always great. But some of the things that Derek had mentioned before, if you are not an expert on an SBA, stop talking right now. Um, not to plug Nikki Lee, but Nikki. Yeah, no, no I was just going to jump in. There were a couple of questions on the SBA loans. Definitely follow Nikki Lee um, from the Statements Project. She's one of our educators. She's going to be doing a couple of classes on here coming up. Um, if you want some real clear advice on the SBA loans, um, that's the person to go to. Yeah. So like, I, like follow Nikki because Nikki is like crazy. Like she's ready to go. She's like talons out and she is all over SBA. She's posted a lot of great stuff on the statements project. But, but look to those. Same thing with your news, right? If you're watching the news all day, um, you're going to get the same repeating story or how many tests went out. This is only going to get worse, especially for us in New Jersey. We know this. The more tests that go out, this curve is not close to flattening yet. We get it. I want you guys to get it. Don't be alarmed by that. But start your planning now because you're going to have to do it eventually. If it's 21 days, tomorrow I get up. I have <laughs> We've had a Peloton in my house that everybody uses except me. My son's been using it for his gym class every day. I'm getting on the bike tomorrow. I haven't worn shoes in like two weeks. doesn't matter what I do. I'm just, I don't know if it's, I haven't shaved either in a while. So, um, but do something for you. Like don't binge on Netflix. Like whatever you do, if you're an owner that's behind the chair and you said, Hey, you know, I typically spend seven or eight hours behind the chair, apply that for the course of the week and break the hours out. Even if you said, Hey, I'm going to spend an hour on me doing nothing and meditate, whatever it is that you do break those hours out and apply them over the time. And you have so much time to be able to just get things back in gear. If part of it's doing, like I said, I'm going to do my landscaping in the front of the house. It's not going to take me days to do it, but plan it out. Use the time to your advantage because you are going to open. You are going to be fantastic. You are going to do it. We are going to help you. Night one, I am done unless anybody has any questions. You're awesome, dude. I appreciate your time tonight. Uh, I'm going to just look at the questions. I might have a question for you, but I just want to remind everybody, please get all of your industry friends involved in this. Invite them, get the links out to them for the classes, get them in Salon Owner Mastermind, because we are going to create a group that makes a difference for the industry. We are going to uh, make a voice, a unified voice, that's never been heard like it's been heard before. I mean, part of what that is know, a great our game point. plan is, is to create a union for us as a group. Obviously, I come from running a union as a background. Um, it's no different than having an independent um, nonprofit voice, and we will do that. We will be heard, period. Okay? That's my message to you tonight. Get involved. Get this group involved. Get your friends in here, okay? If you're interested in some of the offers that are coming up from James, from other ones, we'll have follow-up. A lot of the industry educators are going to be giving freebies um, for a certain period of time. Uh, definitely get on them if you can. Obviously, uh, James mentioned Salon Ninja. That's our marketing platform that the group has created. I got to be honest with you. We're giving two months away. If you jump on it right now, you will not be disappointed on the marketing abilities to your clients, not just marketing, but communication ability, um, because we want that voice to go out to our clients. And whether it's on Facebook, TikTok, Facebook Live, whatever it is, get your voice out there. Stay in touch with everybody, right? That's sustainability. James, you had some great lessons, and I just want to reiterate them again. Um, sustainability with the salon, all the stuff he went over, sustainability, sustainability with yourself, right? Our self is important. Let's take care of ourselves during this period. 
and sustainability as an industry. And that was what I just talked about, right? Let's get involved. Let's be a voice. Thanks, James, for your time tonight. Guys, thank you. Any okay. questions, Facebook, throw them up there. Uh, I'm happy to answer questions. Um, I got plenty of free time right now. Awesome. Thanks, everybody, for showing up tonight. Great voice. Um, we had a lot of people on tonight. So thank you so much for being on tonight. Good night, everybody.